Hello, and welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Art of Programming using Scala. Uh, we continue our work through Chapter 3. In the previous videos, we looked in detail at dealing with numbers and numeric types. So we've said that we will be using int and double most of the time. Uh, we looked at some of the details for how uh, computers store uh, numeric data in binary and what implications that might have to us when we are writing programs. Um, we've also looked at the fact that int and double are not the only options. There's also byte, short, long, and float. Uh, in this video, we want to look at some of the details uh, around types that we generally don't think of as being numeric types. For example, care to represent a single character or string to represent a string of characters. So we have Scala up here in the REPL. And we've learned previously that we can make a character literal by putting a single character inside of single quotes. We can also call to care on an integer. Uh, and so you can see that the number 100 happens to map to the letter D. Um, string literals were created by putting things in double quotes. And that's about how far we got with these previously. Uh, I guess we also saw that we could call to string and have numbers be converted over to strings. When we type in a string like this, or when we type in a character, everything is happy as long as the character that we're typing in is something that's easy to put on the keyboard. Um, but what about when it's not? So for example, let's say I wanted to do something like uh, after dinner, she said, I need to finish my homework. Now, anyone who's had previous programming experience can look at this and immediately see that we have a problem. And if I go ahead and hit enter, uh, you can see that there is an error here. The problem is that my string itself, the after dinner she said I need to finish my homework, is uh, one that has double quotes in it. And when Scala looks at this, it sees open double quotes here and close double quotes here, and then a bunch of other stuff followed by an empty string at the other end, and it winds up being confused because it's not really certain what I need to finish my homework period means. Um, so that's somewhat problematic for it. If we want to represent a character like a double quote, we need to what we refer to as escape it. We need to put a backslash in front of it. And so by doing that, Scala says, oh, this double quote because it's after a backslash, it is not supposed to be terminating the string. Instead, it is supposed to be uh, treated as just a normal double quote. And the same thing here. And so you can see that that comes out just fine. Um, you can also get single quotes this way if you want to make certain that they're not seen as single quotes. Um, there are some other characters. For example, what if I wanted to have a string that spanned multiple lines? So line one, and then I want to hit enter and say line two, and hit enter again and say line three, and then close it off. Well, that's not allowed. Uh, I can't hit enter in the middle of a regular string literal. If I want to put to go to a new line in there, I can use a, spe a special escape character, backslash n, that says go to the next line. And so now if I do this and then backslash n again, line 3, when I hit enter there, you can see that this is line 1, line 2, line 3, and they are all separated by new lines, which is what the backslash n does. Uh, there's a backslash t for um, doing tabs, and there are a number of other of characters that are 
standardly used with a backslash to represent things that are hard to type. An interesting question which might have occurred to you is, what if I actually want a backslash? Uh, I want to have in my string, oh, missing an I. Well, that winds up being a problem because it says after that backslash, you need to have something that was supposed to be uh, what you were escaping. Turns out the solution to this is, well, when you want a backslash, you have to backslash your backslash. Um, and there are certain times in programming when that can be particularly troublesome. So we want to see how we can get away from that. There's one other form of escape character that you probably won't use all that often, but I just find it so interesting to point out that, that it's, it's worth doing so. What if you want something else that's not nicely typable? So it turns out that the care type in uh, Scala is encoded in what's called Unicode. Now Unicode, if you were to go and do a search for it, Unicode is a standard encoding that takes you from numbers into various characters and it uses two bytes. So there's a little over 65,000 possible characters that can be encoded in Unicode. That is helpful uh, because it means that you can actually put any letter or any symbol from all of the languages that are spoken on the, uh, or that are written anywhere on the planet inside of this encoding. Uh, whereas if you had, a, for example, an the earlier encoding, which is, is a subset of Unicode, is called ASCII. Uh, ASCII only had used a single byte, so you only had 256 different possible characters, which is not even enough to hold Chinese. So with Unicode, they use two bytes. Um, when you treat it as a number, it is an unsigned two byte uh, number, so it can go from zero to a little over 65,000. Um, and you can use an escape character to insert any Unicode that you want into here uh, as long as you pick the right format. You're supposed to put the uh, backslash followed by U followed by four hexadecimal digits. And those four hexadecimal digits represent a code. Now, one place that you might find this to be helpful would be if you wanted to put in some math symbols in here. So I will go down and pull up some different math symbols. Um, Oh, that one, actually, let's see. I had been, oh, operators instead of alphanumeric symbols. Let's go to operators. Here's a fun one. How about a triple integral over a closed volume? Uh, you can see here at the bottom, it says 2230. If you go this far out, you can notice there are E's and F's. So that is in hexadecimal, 2230. So if we now come into here and I do something like print line backslash u2230, when it prints, you can see we get a funny symbol. And that symbol happens to be a triple integral over a, with the, the loop around it for saying it's over a closed volume. So there are lots of possibilities with Unicode. You can represent any symbol from any language that you want. You just have to go look, at, uh, look it up and uh, you can put it into your, into your Scala. Now, going back to this whole, I want to have a backslash in my string, or I want to have new lines. If you were building a string that was supposed to span multiple lines and was going to have backslashes in it, because, or, or was going to have quotes in it, or was going to have whatever types of stuff, sometimes having to escape your characters gives, is so much of a pain that it's not worth it. In the second half of the book, we'll see regular expressions. And they happen to be a prime example of where having to put a backslash on your backslash is just really difficult to do. So there is a way around that in Scala, and it's to use what are called raw strings. And a raw string, instead of being enclosed in just a double quote, is enclosed inside of three double quotes. So you start with three double quotes. And inside of here, you can type whatever you want.
And in fact, you can uh, have things that would normally be identified as escape characters. And when they are inside of a raw string, they are not interpreted that way. Okay, so the backslash n does not become a new line. The backslash t does not become a tab. Uh, individual backslashes are just fine. These quotes here are not a problem. Um, so there are certain applications, especially, and the most common one that you're going to use until we get to regular expressions is if you just want to have a string that spans multiple lines. You start it with the triple, uh, the triple double quotes, you end it with the triple double quotes, and you can type everything that you want in between there, and it will all be interpreted very nicely. So that's it for our look at characters and strings. Um, you should play with these. You should see how you can build strings in some different ways. Uh, note that you know, even the things that you build with triple quote strings, you can still do your string concatenation. And things such as that. So you should play around with that and make sure that you understand how things are, are supposed to be happening and how they work. Uh, also, play around with some of the characters that, uh, you know, in single quotes and see if you can, you know, figure out things like where the regular alphabet lies in Unicode. Uh, so that's it for this video. See you again soon.